Hi, welcome to Down From The Attic. I'm Luke and each week I'll be coming up here and having a look around my attic and trying to find something interesting and cool to show you. This week we're going to be looking at... Crash Dummies. The toys were first introduced in 1990 by Tyco in conjunction with the Road Traffic Safety Administration in America. The idea was, was to have a toy, an interactive experience for children to get to use to the importance of buckling and safety belts. I remember seeing adverts on CITV and Cartoon Network at a time with Slick and Spin, the two major characters from the Crash Dummies line, looking over their shoulders, giving the thumbs up, not looking at the road ahead and saying, uh, hey, don't be a dummy, buckle your safety belt and leave the crashing to us. Don't you be a dummy, buckle your safety belt and leave the crashing to us. Well, these toys are actually designed to break. They're designed to fall, power and crash and I certainly wasn't going to leave the crash into them. It was my sixth birthday, and I remember going down to the local Toys R Us and spotting the crash cab, which is just a recolour and a remodel of the uh, bomber crash car here. And I remember seeing it on the shelf, and the neon colours just absolutely leapt off the shelf at me. And then I picked up the box and I look at it, and it's like, wow, a, a toy that breaks apart? Intentionally, you can smash it to bits and it will work again. This absolutely blew my mind as a kid. I thought these were the coolest things in the world. So my birthday was, I think maybe in the middle of the week, and we bought this on a Saturday. And I got myself that worked up, that excited about playing with this, that I made myself sick at school. Not intentionally, just with that excitement, like. I can't wait to get home and play with this, that I threw up and I got out of school just to play with a toy. Wow, look at the artwork. The guy's giving the thumbs up as he's being hurled through a window. This guy's eh, he's taking a nap against the airbag. Of course, on the box was the whole message of the line with the buckle up for safety. But this really didn't play much into the actual play of the toys. Then, of course, we get to the toy itself, and here it is. And this is one of the few instances where, even as a kid, what was on the box was exactly what came in. There was no disappointment. Everything about this thing was fantastic. Absolutely awesome. The colours, the build, everything. Now let's take a better look at the car. The car, like I said before, is designed to break and fall apart. The whole roof and the windshield are designed to come off. These doors are held in with just little pegs and usually come flying off. As you can see the steering wheel here, this pops off when the bonnet's crumpled and there's a little airbag inside, which I thought was really cool for the time, really pushing the whole safety aspect. Being a passenger in these cars would really suck because this seat is actually spring-loaded when the car crashes, the spring-loaded seat flings the passenger through the windshield. Nice. You can see on the bonnet there's a clear line where the crumple is supposed to happen. So when it hits a wall or another car, it bends. And you simply push it down to fix it. The wheels actually pop off when it crashes. So. As mentioned before, these toys were introduced to help children get used to seatbelt safety. But these toys are 27 years old now, and the rubber that's used for the seatbelts has become brittle and cracked over the years. Most of them have actually perished. Um, you can replace them with just using elastic bands, and here I've got the original seatbelt clips. The clips just slot into here and hold the dummies in place. Personally though, I was all about making as big a crash as I possibly could. I wasn't interested in seatbelt safety, I was interested in carnage. So you take your car, take your dummy, I'm going to have two in, I'm going to have uh, Daryl drive him, and he just slots in there. Spin's going to be the passenger because I want him to fly out through the wind windshield. Put them in like that, take the roof. And that just slides and clicks into place. Ooh, 
Wow, what a crash. You can see Slick's legs have come off, the wheels come off, and Daryl's sat on the parcel shelf. And that's the beauty of these toys. No two crashes are ever gonna be exactly the same. Get a few of these cars together and wow. Oh my God, his head's popped off. The crash noise line didn't just stop with cars though. They had a whole range of different vehicles that children could smash up and take apart and put into massive pileups. One of my favourites was the uh, Jackknife Racer. Um, that's this one here. It's an F1 car, but when you crash it, the wheels will come off again. The front spoiler comes loose. Cockpit canopy comes off. Spoiler comes free. But I suppose the best feature of it is it's spring loaded to hinge in half. The steering column also slams into the chest and activates the buttons, so it's just a absolute shower of limbs and car parts flying everywhere. Brilliant toy. Another amazing vehicle that brought out was the motorbike. When it crashes, the front wheel presses in on this small button here. It detaches the sidecar, and the sidecar itself can also split off into like a clamshell. So massive, massive potential for big, big crashes. Amazing fun. The crash plane was a late addition to the line and was, again, fantastic fun. This was one probably the one which took the most beating. Uh, I remember taking this up to my bedroom and throwing it out the window and watching it crash on the patio. Probably not the best way to look after this toy, but wow. The crash plane is one of the few toys that I have from the dummies line with an intact seat belt. I'm amazed that this thing's lasted 20 plus years, uh, but there we go. If you're wondering what the big button on the back here is, the underside of the plane is like a bomb bay door. So you can keep a dummy on the inside there and drop them down. If you're wondering what's just come out there, it's a parachute pack. Another detail that I enjoyed from the airplane was these old style aviator goggles and hats. Um, it wasn't needed, but they included it anyway, which I think is quite cool. The plane is an amazing, amazingly sturdy toy. This one has definitely taken a nose dive into concrete and patios and floors. That's another thing with these toys, pieces will end up going absolutely everywhere. Obviously it's going to hit the ground nose first. And you can see here where these arrows are, this is the engine cover. Those two parts will pop off, but it will also cause the yoke, uh, plane steering wheel, <laughs> to crush into the dummy's chest and activate the buttons. Bull's truck has a spring-loaded axle, and I have absolutely no idea how this works. Uh, if you spin the wheels like this, it doesn't work. It just will not detach, but when it's travelling on the ground, it will detach and spring loose and send Bull's truck hurtling through the air. This one doesn't really fall apart like the others do, but still fantastically good fun. The air intake scoop here, when you press it, there's like a battering ram, so you could lower this next to a car, press the button and smash it up, and just click it in. Another weird inclusion onto the crash damage line was this digger garbage disposal thing. Again, it had no crash features to it. Nothing comes loose other than the dumpster. And I, I didn't really much see the point of it. I suppose you could use it to flip cars over, but generally speaking, if the car's gonna crash, it's gonna flip. And you could set jumps up to do that anyway. One possible function for the scoop digger is to scoop up the parts of previously crashed dummies. Scoop them up, and they get dumped in the bin. In addition to the vehicles, there were a number of non-vehicular sets that came out as well. These are a couple of the sets that I owned as a child. These are the Crash and Bash Chair and the Crash Cannon. 
The first one that came out that was not a vehicle was the actual crash test center, which I would have absolutely loved to have had as a child. It had a breakaway wall and it also had a spring loaded seat that you could use a number of different um, attachments and slam the dummy into different things like steering wheels, cement blocks, sending flying through the wall if you wanted to. It looked fantastic and the wall, the breakaway wall was big enough for one of the cars to fit through so you could simulate a crash going through the wall. It looked amazing. The crash from Bass Chair is an oddity really in that you're not really doing that much of crashing. You are basically it's like a Frankenstein's laboratory desk. You strap your dummy to it and you can perform all sorts of weird crash experiments on him. You can put different steering wheels on, different things to smash the buttons. You can actually extend the chair out and rip his legs off and um, pop joints out of place. It's a very weird one for it, for crash test dummies. It seems more to me like you're testing the dummy rather than the car, which which, to be honest with you, is more or less what the whole toy line was about, about car safety, not dummy safety. Junkman was the nemesis of the crash dummies, and Junkman's crash cannon was yet another set I owned. You pop a dummy in the cannon, angle the barrel, pull the string and... Mm, no, wait, yank the string, yank the string hard, there we go. This was another weak set in my mind. I didn't care too much for the Junkman and the Junkbots. They didn't fall apart like the dummies. They were good figures, really good, well sculpted and very inventive using car parts to shape them, but they felt counterproductive to the whole dummy and crash idea. I liked just crashing vehicles and seeing them fall apart. These didn't do that much for me. One thing I only found out about whilst doing this review is that you can actually use the junk bot limbs on the dummy torso, so you can take off the dummy head, take off, let's take off junk man's head, and junk man's head will fit onto the dummies, which is kind of cool. I wish I'd known about this as I was a kid because obviously it would have helped with the play value a lot more. Another unusual vehicle to come out of the line was this small scooter. I, I never really liked this thing. The fact that it didn't break apart or crash at all just seemed kind of boring. I can't really mention the Crash Dummies line without mentioning the awesome 3D animated TV series. It came free with one of the figures, I believe it was the Junkman figure, it came on VHS, and let me tell you, the amount of times I watched that tape, I wore it out. It was fantastic. This was back in 1990. No one had ever seen 3D animation like this before. It absolutely blew my mind to see something like this. Put simply, these toys are, they're incredible. There's really been nothing like them before or since. And the fact that you can smash them into each other, smash them against the walls, throw them into the ground, and just pick up the pieces, reassemble them, and do it all over again, that's just part of the fun. And the fact that you're getting a different crash each and every time, you can mix it up, you can have a plane drop on an F1 car, you can have Bull's truck take on all three cars here, you can have the motorbike try and take on the digger, and each and every one will get a different result, a different experience. That just keeps the interest going with these. Box versions of these toys are getting more and more expensive on eBay and, the, and on the second hand market. But if you do have any in the attic, take them down, dust them off, and get crashing. Thanks for watching. Against me, get the job done.